Well, good morning, everybody. Today we are going to spend these three hours speaking about HTML and CSS and doing some example and exercises or just on these two things. Uh, so just to get started with some questions so that we can maybe all wake up a little bit. Um, first of all, you, you read the, the, the readings, right? All of them, good. Um, so we, 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 today we will build upon them. Mm? Um, do you have any questions from those readings? Not particularly. Okay, next question. How many of you ever used HTML in the past? So this should be easy that, that they started. And CSS? Okay, so also that should be pretty easy. So today should be pretty easy for many of you or, 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 for, not, or for all of you, just maybe we can just revise something uh, in this point. So before going there, let me just speak three minutes, something like this, upon this picture. So this picture try to summarize um, the architecture of a generic web application and we see here that we have well two actors one is the user the person that is using uh, the single web application and the other one is the web application per se that is then split in two parts mm, typically one is is the front end and the other one is the back end mm. so the user interact with the front end. It's, some, it's the only things that the user see. It's the front end. It doesn't see anything about the back end. If not true, the front end. Mm? So the front end is all the user can do with, your, with a web application. Mm? Independently from what the back end can offer, maybe the back end can offer much more than the feature published there in the front end. But the user here never know because you cannot access directly to the back end. Hmm? And here we have the front end and we, we already said that a big part of the course will be focused on the front end. Hmm? And the front end is essentially a web browser running H HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That's the let's say the only three languages that a browser, and this is an approximation, but let's say that these are the only three languages that the browser can understand. Hmm? It cannot understand Java or Python. They should, go, they should pass through one of these three languages. Hmm? And this is an approximation, then browsers starting to support other things, but hmm? these three are still the the main one. And the front end is then speaking, mm, requesting information and getting responses with the back end, mm, typically through HTTP request and response, so using the HTTP protocol. Mm. And the back end is typically in a different, yes maybe just outside of this course, is running on a different machine than the front end. Mm? Because the front end is actually running on the user's computer, on the user device. Mm? The back end instead is running somewhere else, mm? in the cloud, whatever, but somewhere else. Mm? So this distinction is not only logical, it's also most of it, it's all, most of the time physical. Hmm? 
here in, the co in, the, in this course, we are going you, and also we, also I, are, we are all running in this course the front end and the back end on the same machine because we are developing it. So we are running, we will run that those on our same machine. Hmm? But never forget that they are actually running separately. So even if it's, they are on the same machine, they have different behavior, different things they can do. So always imagine the front end as something running in another place, not on your machine. Hmm? This could be useful for understanding why some behavior, hmm, uh, you cannot do some things. So one question that sometimes happens later in this course is, or, or in other courses, is, well, I, I would like to open a database, query a database directly from the front end, hmm? because it's everything on a single computer typically, but you cannot open and query a database from the front end, because again, the, the front end is actually running somewhere else, and the database instead is running close to the backend, mm? so they are separate. Mm? Always remember this, and they speak mm, traditionally through HTTP request and response, so through the HTTP protocol. Mm? And in our, mm, in our case, we all, we all run in our computer, mm? so we will send HTTP request and we send to ourselves HTTP response, but it's, again, there are two separate processes. Mm? And, and this is a picture of, a, let's say, a modern web application in which the front end is actually something very, very different from the back end. Mm? So in any case, the front end is running on, a com on the user's computer. In, in traditional architecture, is the back end that provide the single pages already uh, put up, already prepared for easy to, to use from the, from the browser in contemporary web application, like the one that we are going to do with React, is the browser that through JavaScript is creating the web page on its own. Mm? But in both cases, is the backend that at a certain point will provide to the user computer the information to get started or to get all the work done. So what is in the backend? In the backend there is the application logic, mm, um, the one not related to the, the front end of the backend can be done in the same language, in JavaScript, the same programming language that you use in the front end, and we are going to do this thing. We are going to use JavaScript for both the server, the backend, and the, and the front end. And, but you can also use Python, PHP, Java, whatever, programming language, and, uh, sorry, and uh, the, the backend is typically a server that serve the pages, the, the JavaScript, the CSS, the images, the documents, whatever, to the front end, and it has clearly access to a file system, mm, to the server file system, the server on which the backend is running, uh, that contains HTML file, CSS file, images, uh, documents, PDF, PDF documents, whatever is need to be presented and passed through the front end. And uh, typically also have, even if not requested, but typically is also have a database access for storing and getting data. And this database could be a SQL database like MySQL, Postgre, et cetera, and also a NoSQL database. Any kind of database that could be useful for solving the specific problem that the front end, the backend, is uh, realizing. Mm? And if we need to, if we want to add another things, typically in contemporary web application, uh, the same backend is also providing mm, information not only to the web front end, but also to maybe a mobile application a native mobile application that is getting data from a centralized place that is the backend. Mm? So, so most of the time, the backend is both serving a web application and as a separate set, not so separate, a separate set of APIs for um, also getting information to the 
um, to a mobile application or a desktop application mm, or any kind of application that needs to access remote data, mm, like the data in the database. Mm. But it's not depicted here because that is not uh, a web ap application. Mm. So these are the three components. There are the people that are using a browser to do something and this browser that has something in it uses the backend for um, working. Mm? So how I it works, let's say the process, in, in brief, the process works that the, the user open the browser, mm? the browser, when you type an address, HTTP something, well, well, we resolve the AP address, etc., and then we'll make a request to the server, mm? to the backend, if the request is valid, and it's a, uh, and there is a page, an HTML page, this will be, this page will be get back to the, to the browser that will analyze the HTML page and ask for any external link from the web page. So any CSS file, any images, any JavaScript file is then asked back to the backend mm, to, to have them. So the, the browser is asking again, all this information, the server is providing all this information as, as soon as the browser is able to render as all this information, it renders the page and the person can use the page here to do action. And if you press a button, this request, a button to log in, this request is typically sent back to the backend that will check the login, the credential, whatever, that give you the, uh, the response and eventually a new page, hmm, the page of the login user, or the information in JavaScript to render hmm, the page correctly. Hmm. And this depends, again, from which kind of front-end we are going to do. Hmm. So if we are going to do a dynamic front-end, like in React, hmm, the server will give us information. The server will give us first time HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and from that moment, uh, moment on, it will give just us information mm, in some structured way. In a more traditional mm, web architecture, the backend instead will give you every time, give you the browser, every time HTML, CSS, JavaScript files when needed. Mm. So again, in a traditional web application, the front end and the back end exchange mainly HTML pages and CSS and images, etc. In a modern web application, like the one that we are going to do, the front end will receive the HTML page, CSS file, JavaScript once, and then use the back end to get all the information, the raw data to display in the front end. Mm? So there is this shift from the browser is just the stupid, let's say, tool able to visualize HTML pages, CSS pages, and to do a little bit with JavaScript to uh, let's have the browser do everything except retrieving data. Mm? So data is collected, is get from the backend and then the browser is the browser responsibility to visualize the data in the proper way, to make it available, to perform all the enabled button, disabled buttons, etc. Mm. And this, this last year is the, the kind of web application that we are going to, to develop in this course, mm. the, the modern one, in which the browser has, again, the capability and to, re to realize, to build, to display, to render, to manage the web application in the front end, getting just the data that it needs from the backend when it needs. Mm? So we are just separating things. The front end is the one for interacting, creating the website, and the backend is the source of data. Mm? So in this modern application, the backend will have a little, little app logic here because most of the logic is in the front end in, let's say, modern web applications. Okay?
Is it quite clear? Even if abstract? Mm. So then we, we are going, again, in this course to focus on the front end. We are not going to focus too much on these four person here that needs to interact with the front end. Mm. This is not the goal of this course. Nor we are going to uh, go deep inside the back end because, again, uh, the next courses in the web application series will instead focus more on the backend and what you can do with this for person here is instead more a topic of other courses like the human computer interaction course. Mm -hmm. So we are going to go deep here in what is possible to be done technically on the backend and a little bit on the backend for getting information and giving information. Uh, obviously, we will have a look here just not to do terrible things that make us cry when we see a web page. But this is very bare minimum. Okay, having said that, let's start with this. So, what we want to do today in these three hours, so in the first hour and a half, what I would like to do with you is to build uh, at least the HTML of this. Mm, so this is clearly um, done by hand mm, um, and it's and was done on purpose actually. Um, so this is a web page that we can we are going to build today. Mm. So we have a navigation bar on the top is the, the blue uh, items the blue arrows and text indicates what are this element and the, the black elements is that is the text or the current element of the of the information. Mm? So the blue text is the semantic information in a way, mm? uh, while the, the text is the, the blue the black things is the actual content. Mm? So we will have a navigation bar on the top of the page with a title that will be my exam. Then we'll have some text here. Mm? It's a paragraph of text maybe not too long, let's say, welcome, this is the page of your exam that you did at Polytechnico, something like this. And then we will have this table. Mm, we will continue, we are continuing with the example of the exams. As you can see, uh, we will have this table that have five columns. The first one is the date, is for st storing the date of an exam. Uh, the second one is the name of the exam. Uh, the third one are the number of credits, then the score, and then a column with some actions mm, that in this moment uh, is, uh, for instance, delete, to delete that, that exam from the, the list. Mm. And then, and these are all buttons, and then uh, we will maybe have a last line of this table uh, that is all of, is full of input text, mm, input area to insert information, to insert the date, to insert the, the name of the exam, to insert the number of credits, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and a button to add mm, eventually the exam to the table. And finally, we will have on the, on the bottom, the footer. Mm. So an area, mm, here we have the header in a way, and here we have the footer with just the here and the name of the course something quite simple. And we are going to do this, we're going to structure this in HTML first, and then we will add a little bit of CSS until re realizing this. Mm? And all of these will not uh, be, let's say, working in an interactive way, mm? meaning that if you press any of this button, nothing will happen because this is just HTML and CSS at a certain point. We will not have interaction mm, that is given by JavaScript in the browser. Mm. So when we press the delete button, nothing will happen. Mm. Because again, we, don't, we cannot now add JavaScript code to edit the table and remove that line. Mm. So it will be just a static, fake page of the exam, mm? just to get started with HTML and CSS. Then in the lab on Thursday, 
you are going to do something like this, so without interaction, just HTML, CSS, HTML and CSS, with a film library that you already have uh, started to do uh, last week in JavaScript uh, as a desktop application. Hmm? So we're going to do this in three steps. The first one will be HTML code. The second one will be, let's add some, let's say, CSS by end. And the third one is let's add a lot of CSS, maybe rely, not maybe, relying on an external framework for CSS instead of writing all the CSS uh, on, it, on our own. Hmm? So this is the, a mock-up, a uh, handmade draft of the goal that we would like to have at the end of the three hours with colors, typically clearly. Mm. So here there is no color, but it's just black and white uh, made again by end. Okay, so this is sort of the goal. Uh, in the first hour and a half, we are going to build just the HTML and CSS uh, without, um, without slides, without anything, just this exercise. Then in the second half of today's three hours, we are going to complete this with a framework uh, and we are going to see a little bit of slides on CSS. Mm? And this will be the three hours related to HTML and CSS that we are going to do in the course. Mm? Next week, we are going back to JavaScript in the web, however. Mm? So trying to add this interaction to this button, for instance. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is actually to create a file. Uh, let me call it index one dot html mm. uh, i'm going to create multiple files so that we have one file for just the html one file with a little bit of javascript and the third file with much more javascript so that you have all the steps in a separate version mm, let's say and let me increase the zoom remove this that's not needed right now. Uh, do you see? Bigger? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, you have read the reading and you, or al almost all of you, no HTML, so what is the first thing that we have to write? Doc type. Hmm? Doc type HTML. Hmm? This is the way in which we are telling the browser that this is a HTML5 document. Hmm? Where HTML5 is the latest version of HTML is, and is actually a living standard. So they are editing, adding things to the same HTML5 standard that we have. Mm? And this line is a little bit different in HTML4, for instance. Mm? Then? Yes, yeah, some HTML elements, that sounds good. And um, which one in particular? D? Which one? Which HTML tag? Ah, okay, the HTML, okay, yes. That's right. Hmm? That is the main element that we, we must have. Hmm? And then, speaking about main elements that we must have, here we need to add And then after add, outside add, body. Okay, and what is add? So teach me HTML. What is add? Why we have head? What 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 the meaning of head? So include libraries. Meta tag. Page 
title. Can we create a definition from this set of correct things? To include, mm, okay, to include information about the document, information that aren't visualized anywhere in the page. So anything that is in ad is not visualized here mm, in the page. Mm, will be used by the HTML file, the, the browser, to do other things, mm, to set the title of the page. But the title of the page is not shown here. What is shown the title of page here, where now is written new tab. Whatever you put in ad is not going to be visualized. If you want to visualize something in the page, you have to put things in body. That is actually the body of the, um, of the page, the actual content. Hmm? And these are mandatory, uh, this is the, the standard structure. All HTML page is structured in this way. There is the doc type, there is the HTML tag, there is head, there is body. And then you have something in head, you have something in body. Mm -hmm. So this is the bare structure of the, of the page. And you see also one thing, that this is, how would, how would you classify this structure? This is a, a tree. You have a, a root node, and you also type here in this way. So here, indentation is not, is not mandatory, but typically you indent, because it's actually giving you the idea of which level in the tree you are. So there is HTML, that is the root node. Then there are two children that are head and body. And that head will have other children, and body will have other children, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this will be, build a tree. A tree, or oh, let me, hmm? a tree like this. Hmm? So this is, a, a, let's say, an internal representation, a graphical representation on an HTML page. Hmm? There are elements along the tree. Hmm? Okay, and then we, we will go back to, to, to that picture after. Okay, so. Yes. I didn't get the, the question, sorry. Uh, not that, that I know, I mean, I, I, I press tab and uh, I, I do manually. Uh, so maybe there, is some, maybe there is some plugin or some combination, but probably it's, it's easier, it's quicker to, to do it uh, by hand right now. We, we are not, we are to, so we are going to, to write HTML and CSS uh, documents uh, by hand right now, but at a certain point, we, we are not to, to go to write all of these by hand. We are not to, to have, you know, to fill this table manually. We will just we create a table and then we say, dear JavaScript, fill out the table, getting this information from the database. So we are going to, to reduce the number of HTML line that we are going to write, clearly. Mm -hmm. um, okay. so. This tag can have some attribute, and each tag has some attributes that are um, specific for an attribute or general, and then can apply for multiple attributes, like HTML as an attribute to say language, and the language is English, because the content of the page will be in English. Hmm? Um, so in, in the ad, let's put some of these metadata that we were mentioning. Mm? Let's put just maybe one, the title. Mm? 
and the title was, okay, let's call it exams. Hmm? And let's just give these as, as the metadata right now. We, we don't have big uh, other metadata to add in this, in this document right now. Hmm? And so this is the ad and the, the, the title that will appear here. And then we have the body. Hmm? So what do we want to add in the body? Let's, what do we need to, to start adding in the body? What's the first element that on the page that you want to add? Let's skip for a moment the navigation bar. Uh, but in the navigation bar, what, what there is present in the navigation bar? The title, the title, okay. So let's put the title here. Um, so uh, some of you say an heading, mm? and so we can have an heading of level one and we can write the title in it. So do you know what H1 is? Yes. It's the title of level one. That is the first level, the main title, the bigger title. But the bigger is not accurate. The, the first level of title, the main title. Hmm? And you can have six h st stand for adding mm? so six headers level h1 to h7 h6 mm? and each of them has a semantic meaning different so header one is the main title it's the first title the first level title and heading six is the, the less the level six title that should come after adding one, adding two, adding three, adding four, adding five. Mm? So writing something like this is permitted in HTML. It doesn't give you error. The page will show in any case, but it's wrong. If you're going to validate the HTML, this will give you a validation error because H2 must be present only after H1. Hmm? But if we are going to, to show this, you see that the web page, it just appear, it just work without error, without any problem. But we should write H1 before H2. Uh, why, in your opinion? The way H1 should come before H2, and why I didn't, uh, I say that, saying that H1 is the bigger title is not accurate. Opinions. There are one answer to the question, to two questions. The, the question is why H2, we cannot write here we shouldn't write here H2 but H1, because why H1 should came first than H2? And link to this, why I told you that H1 is the main title, the first level title, but it's not accurate to say that it is the biggest title. How the page is structured? Mm, yes, mm, more or less. Yes, because the first title came after the second, that is reasonable. 
but then let me ask the other part of the question. Why I, so if I, you see here, H1 is that big. Hmm? If I write H2 here and refresh this, you see is smaller because typically H1 is bigger than H2. But then I tell you that is not accurate to say that H1 is bigger than H2. Yes? Same thing? Yes, because Yes, let's say this in a slightly different way. Because HTML is, again, about the structure of the page. But most importantly, is about the semantic of the page. What an element mean? That element mean that is a header of first level, one of the biggest titles, biggest, biggest most important headers. It doesn't say how it should be it doesn't care about how it should be displayed on screen. You can decide that all the heading has the same size, visually. But that doesn't uh, compromise the fact that either one has, in the structure and in the semantic, a uh, difference importance than either two. It's a priority head header with respect to heading two. So all the HTML, is about structure and semantic, and not how things appear. Hmm? And then we, we, we will have things that appear. We already have things that appear. Hmm? We had either one that is, in this case, was bigger than adding two. And this is quite common, because it's a way to represent this priority, this importance, making it bigger. But it's, it's not mandatory. It could be colors, it could be font style, it could be bold versus not bold. It could, be, it could be a background, it could be spacing, it could be many other things that tell you that one is visually, that one header is more important than the other. Hmm? All those things, the HTML doesn't care at all. The HTML is focusing on structure and semantics. So you are structuring semantically in the sense of meanings how a page will be mm, as a structure and which the elements, which is the meaning of the, the elements. Mm. So you are seeing that here this is a heading of first level, one of the most important headings that you may have in the page. And this is the most important thing. Mm. Now here you see that we, when we change these to H2, the, actually, the, um, the text was smaller. Hmm? Uh, but I told you that this is just structure and we don't have CSS. Hmm? If, you, if you know CSS, you see here that there is not a single line of CSS, right? Uh, not even in the, in the folder. So why here things are different? Why H1 is different than H2? Why H1 is bold and big? And a text, hmm? we can add also a text, the introductory text. And why the text is smaller and not bold? If we don't have CSS, right, in our document. without maybe, there is a default style, better. Each browser has an internal CSS style that apply to all the pages. Mm. And this could be, di is different from browser to browser. But each browser has a default style sheet mm. for every HTML page. And when you use CSS, you are going to overwrite also part of that default um, CSS, hmm? but the browser know how to display 
in a simple way, in some way, with some rules, like H1 is bigger than H2, that is bigger of, from the text, all HTML element. Mm? And then you can, in CSS, personalize most of them easily, and all of them with a certain level of difficulty. And where you see this default browser style, if you, in any browser, go and select inspect or inspect element. This is Chrome, but it's not really different from, from others browser. You see here the, the tree of the HTML page, where you see, for instance, the heading and selecting the element will select also preview, that blue part, etc. And here, in this part, you see the user agent style sheet. That is the default style sheet from this browser. This is very similar to other browsers, but still, this is Chrome specific. And so you see that for every H1, it has a font size, a, ma uh, a margin, and it's bold. It gives some default style automatically to all of these. And if we select the text, we see that there is a different margin. There is not a font size, and this is not bold. And if we select body, it gives you another margin that is 8 pixels. So that margin is applied to all the children of body, 8 pixels and so on, and if you select head, you see that there is basically no, no style sheet, and if you select HTML, uh, the same, just to give you the, an attribute about language that is getting from the, hmm, an attribute about the language, WebKit specific, okay? So here you can also see, and here you can also change, hmm, just in case, you can also change the content of the page in a temporary and preview way, meaning that this is not changing, and as soon as you refresh, you lose the changes. But this is especially useful for CSS to maybe see why some things is not working or see how some things will show will behave when you change some properties before doing it I in the code. So for quick uh, try and catch, for quick debugging, let's say. Mm? Editing the elements in the browser. Mm? Okay, so let's continue with, let me close this because for now we don't need it anymore. Okay, so semantically we are saying that we have a nav bar and uh, a title and then we have some text. Some text P stands for paragraph, and some text, it could be the, a brief description of the table mm, that we have here. Mm, so we, it, this could be a brief description of this table. So uh, what we can write, we'll say the table below summarizes uh, my exams uh, in the master degree in computer engineering uh, at uh, Politecnico hmm? something like this the table below summarize my exams in a master degree in computer engineering at Politecnico di Torino. And Politecnico di Torino, di Torino, I would like to be a link to the Politecnico page. Hmm? So we have a paragraph, and inside the paragraph we have a link. Hmm? Links start with A. A stands for Anchor. H1, either one, P, paragraph, A, it's a link, it's anchor, uh, because it could be an internal, a link internal to the page or external to the page. 
uh, an internal to the page is called anchor and the a tag has an attribute that is mandatory that is href that is the destination of that link in this case clicking the link will open the polito website with this way uh, and then the text of the link is Polytechnico Torino. And if we save and refresh, we see in the full style that we have the full text. And this is a link. And if we click it, we go to the Polytechnico page. Okay? So notice uh, another thing. Why some of these things create a new lines and other things don't? So H1, we wrote H1 and then P. And then inside P, A. So why H1 created a new line and A not? Did you hear it? This thing? Because H1, also paragraph actually. H1 and paragraph are block elements. That means that they occupy try to occupy all the space horizontally and then like a block and you see here well if you expect the element if you select h1 you see that is a, a blue area surrounded with this um, uh, orange area so it is the margin for the entire line and if you select the P you see the same thing uh, the, an entire block and if we add another P or another element after the P it will be another block separate mm? so we are binding the instruction block by block mm? and some elements are block mm? and you see in the CSS because it's written display block that is the default behavior for all this, being block. Other elements like the A, that now we cannot see here, if we select the A element, hmm, it's not a block, it's just highlighting the specific link. And here, hmm, and here should be written in line. So some elements are block, occupy all the space, and then after the block, you go a new line, a new space, and you, you can put another block, for instance. Other elements, like the A, are in line. So they are put where they are, for instance, inside the block, and they stay there. They not generate a new line. They not generate anything. They just are inside the element. And so if you put another inline element after an inline element, they will go put one after the other on the same line. If you put one block after one block, they will, put, they will be stacked one after the other. Most of the, a lot of elements are block and some elements are um, in line. P, heading, body, the table are all block elements. Okay, done. What do we need here? The table, right? That is actually the, the main thing that is in this page, the table. So table, tables are, are quite long to write in HTML, but we need to. So, the table has an element that starts with table. 
and then inside is split into part, can be split into part. One is the adding of the table, the titles inside the table, the, col the columns, and then the content of the table per se. Mm -hmm. So we have a P head, table head, that contains the heading of the table, and then we have, how it will be called in your opinion? If the table heading is called the T head, the table body will be called? Exactly. The body and inside an head, uh, we have to specify the rows of the table. In this case, we have one row because it's in one header. We just have one row of the heading in our table. And so it's TR, table row. And inside the row, we have the cells. We have six columns. And these are called TH. So the first column will be date. Then we have another TH. Uh, it will be exam. Another TH that will be credits, I suppose. Then another TH that is called score, and another TH that is called uh, actions. And if we refresh this, we start seeing the table with the default style that the table has. And then in the body, we need to do the same thing. We need to create, and, and we are done with the adding. We just, we just have one line of adding, one row. And here we need to do the, the body. And it's structured in the same way. We have the table row, and then the cells. And then another row, and then the other cells, in the same order. So let me copy and paste this, because we need to rewrite this, essentially. So we can say, um, 0 01, 0 02, 2022. The exam could be computer architecture. The credits, uh, let me see, 10. Uh, which score? We cannot have a student with all 30. So we need to. 21. And the action, uh, let's write X for now, for delete. Okay, then we are going to do the same thing, maybe other few times. Uh, we can write, I don't know, the 6th of February. And it could be computer, network. Uh, technologies and services that is six credits and score 26 better computer network than computer architecture for the student mm -hmm. and then we can have let's add another one and then and the stop and then we can have uh, maybe the 15 of February. And we can have uh, data science and the database technology. Uh, that is eight credits and the maximum. Let's save this and let's see the result. Oh, sorry. 
my fault. So in the adding is th each cell. In the table is td each cell. So in the body is d, in the adding is h. You shouldn't see all, all of this bold in the default style. So copying and paste is good when you copy and paste the right thing. Okay. Better. And so this is a table with the default style that we have. And then we need a footer right so after the table we can write another p um that was 2022 web applications 1 KZ. Not 2002. Okay? Do you see something strange? Everything is clear, what is written here. Wh what is this? Yes, that was pretty clear. Uh, wh why I wrote this in this way? Hmm? Because there is a special character, uh, actually all the special characters. So if you want to, to write an E with an accent, so here it is, it's in English, so we don't have this kind of problems. But if we were writing this, let's say, in Italian, and we would like to say the table um, is shown before, below, mm, and we need to write the, the E with the accent, mm, we shouldn't write that in HTML. Mm. We should write in this way. E acute. And here you actually have all the, a lot of symbols, with all the letter with accent, with any accent probably you can imagine, it's, it's there in some way. So you can also have the A with various accent, etc. So special symbols that are not in the, let's say in the, in the, um, in the English uh, keyboard. Okay, so we, we don't need it because we are writing in English. Yeah. Yes, I it's safer to use this formalism for doing letter than not writing this, even if we specify the chart set. Yes. Because this is telling you, this is exactly that letter, we don't, whatever the chart set is this is instead left to the browser to say well guess the right chart set and show the, the, the letter so it, it typically works 99 percent of the time works but this is uh, let's say the oldest and then safer way to to actually do in, H in pure html uh, symbols with accent and also other symbols like the copyright Okay, so right now we just added the content, but we didn't 
add anything of the structure, the navigation bar, or an heading bar, or the footer. So we just focused on adding the content. But don't forget what I told you before. HTML is all about structure and semantic. So we can tell a page that a specific area has a specific meaning because it's about structure and semantic. So for instance, we can say that the title, the H1 header, is in a section that semantically represents the header of the page. And if we do this and refresh this, you see that nothing changed. Because it's just in this moment, it's just a semantic information. And then we can have maybe some style that tell us that the header has a yellow background. And so the structure as a, a graphical representation. But right now we are just speaking about structure and semantic. Mm -hmm. And same, we can say that the table and the text mm, is not there in the body, but is inside an element that is called main, that is a valid HTML element tag mm, that represents the main content of a page. Mm -hmm. so we can say that all the table is this in this main, and then we need to indent the table if we want to be good. And then we can do the same for the footer. And which tag is for the footer? Footer? To you? Yes, footer. And you see, if we refresh the page, actually nothing changed again, hmm? because we are just giving structure and semantic, and these elements doesn't have anything in the default style sheet of the browser that tell us how they should appear. Hmm? They don't have a visual representation. It's just structure for us if we want to attach things to this. Okay, let's do other, a few other changes. Uh, let's go in the A. So the A has an attribute that is href that is mandatory and an attribute that is not mandatory but should be, that is title. So a, a element could be, could have all the attributes that you, you, you need to use mm, together. And this is specific, again, for the A. Mm. And the title could be uh, the, the Polytechnical website. Mm. And this is an information mm, that, again, is not visible because it's an attribute. So if we refresh the page, we don't see this information, the Polytechnical website. But if we, if we leave the mouse on the link, it will appear a tooltip that will say the title of that link, the Polytechnical website. And that is taken from the title attribute. And we can have other attributes, for instance, on the table head, you can define a scope, an attribute is called scope. The scope is an attribute uh, for accessibility purpose, mm, for getting it from a screen reader. Mm. So imagine a person who is blind and needs to use your web page to read your web page. It will have a software to read the content. Mm. And so this information like the scope will guide 
the screen reader and tell additional information to the person that cannot see you know, what is written about which is the scope in this case of the heading. The scope could be row or calls. So that heading is an heading for an entire row or is the heading for the column? We can see it because we will have the CSS and the heading is maybe black, it's bold, and so we will see visually that. So we can add all this information and say that this is a heading for a column. All of these are heading for a column. Because they actually, for the columns, the content is, is in the column. And we can also add, hmm, and this will, will give you as a different rendering. If you remember the mock-up, hmm, all of these were buttons. Hmm, and instead here we just put an X text. So we can say that this is a button, for instance. So we can use the button element. And if we refresh, you see that now the X, the first one, the first X, is a button. Then when pressed, it doesn't do anything, because it is, but it's is semantically a button. So it's not text. It's something that you can push in some way. Mm -hmm. And so we can do the same thing for all the X, all the three X. Okay, and all of these are semantic container mm, because all of that, those have a meaning attached. Mm. Then we have in HTML two elements that are not semantic but are opaque. Just two, one, one per type. One is block based, another one is in line. And these two elements are. You know, if you ever write HTML, you probably use it, at least one of the two. One is three letter, starting with D, and the other is four letter, starting with S. One is div, and the other is span. Hmm? Div is a block container to put together different elements. Mm -hmm. So instead of writing main here, we could have written div, mm -hmm. if we would, would like to put all together in one single container. But main has a meaning. Say it's the main content of the page. Mm -hmm. HTML, for instance, define also article. That is the main content of a page like a newspaper page, so an article. It has meaning in the, in the container. Div is just a container, just to put together things and do whatever you want with the container. And that div is the um, block container, and span is the same, but is the inline container. Hmm? So these are the two containers without meaning, without specific meaning attached in um, in HTML, and when possible, it's always better to prefer the, mean, the meaningful container, but we will see that when we are going to use a CSS um, framework, actually the CSS framework will use a lot divs, mm -hmm. uh, because it's try to give meaning through CSS elements more than through the container per se, mm -hmm. and also to be more general because you don't know if you want to add a main. So the CSS framework creator doesn't know if you are going to use that for a main, an article, whatever. Mm -hmm. So they just say div. So when possible, prefer the semantic uh, elements, basically all of them, but sometimes you, you are going to use div as well. Mm -hmm. 
uh, what we miss? Oh, yes, we miss the last row. That given that is that is fake, uh, we can write it. The for the last law, row is about the inputs, mm? so adding a new exam in the table. Mm? So we can do this in this way, or we can do, could have a button here saying uh, add a new exam that will open a pop up and when you insert the information. And so this is input, the input element, and, and that's it. It's just input, the, the element doesn't have um, anything written inside, and this is could be a plus because it's adding. Uh, and we can, we should specify in the input which is the type of the information that we're going to inputting. Mm? So in the first case, and we have a series of standard type. Mm? In the first case, we will have a date. In the second case, that is the exam, we will have text. And also, actually, in the other case, we will have text. And we can, for instance, say that the size of the credits is two digit. Mm? So you cannot insert three digits for credits. Mm? You, you, cannot, you don't have an exam with 35 credits. No, 107 credits. Mm? You just have two, cre two, two digits. And same things for the score. You, at maximum, you can have three digits. Most of the time, two, sometimes three. You cannot have four as a score in, in the Italian system. And this will create <coughs> some text, some input text, in which we can type. whatever we want, and here we have a, since it's date, is attached to the default element for date. It's a calendar. Mm -hmm. And notice that this element and also other elements are browser specific. Mm -hmm. That means that if I open the same page in another browser, in any other browser, it will probably appear differently. Mm? So in Safari, it's pre-filled. It gives you a preview. It's not even filled. It's just a preview with month, in this case, m on my computer, on month, date, uh, day, and here. On Chrome, it's not pre-filled, doesn't have a preview, and the format is day, month, year. The format shown here, mm, at least. Then if you click here, you have the calendar, in which you can select a date, as if you click here, you have the calendar, in which you can select a date. You don't have the icon, however, here, while in Chrome you have the icon. Mm, and in Firefox, it will have a different behavior, still allowing you to select a date, but this is browser-specific implementation. So each browser can do slightly different things with these inputs, with inputs, with checkbox, etc. And I already start to tell you this, that all of these standard elements, checkbox, date input, etc., are really, really hard to personalize with CSS. In some cases, it's not possible to personalize them with CSS because they are standard and browser-based implementation that differ, differ from browser to browser. So for instance, for date, what you do is not using, most of the time, the standard element, but you use a date picker, get from a CSS framework that will render the same on different browsers. So that you are sure that you get 
the same the same visualization, the same, the same interaction for all your users independently from which browser they're using. And so this is clearly on, on, on the desktop, on the mobile, it will have a slightly different implementation as well, these standard elements. Okay, last things and then we are going to, to a break is that we also have a uh, element hmm, a semantic element that is called a side that is meant to be for a sidebar hmm? so a side should be a sidebar on the left and then on the right should be the main but again given that this is just semantic you don't really have a sidebar. You just have the space whose meaning is that should be a sidebar. And then it's not a duty of the HTML to structure the layout, the visual layout accordingly. So that the, this is a sidebar is actually on the left and everything else is actually on the right. That is the work of CSS, not of HTML. Hmm? CSS that we are going to, to do uh, after the break in 15 minutes. <laughs>